Papa John day three on Cumberland. This is a Brick Hill campground. It's kind of on the northern end of the island. It's right on the river. Nice thing here is they got a water pump. Let's see if I can figure that out. Yeah. And it's, you still got to treat the water. I use Aquamira out here. The water, uh, there's lots of non potable water sources, but you still, they recommend boiling it. The Aquamira drops work pretty good. Lightweight, easy to easy to handle. I put them in a little little bottle like this and works out fine. I'm going to head up to the African church and check that out. It's starting to rain a little bit, but we'll be all, we'll be all right. This is a trail out of camp. The trails aren't marked that well, but it's not a big island, so you're probably going to be all right. Oh man, look at that. These horses. I thought I dropped a big load last night, but check this out. I mean, that thing's huge. Must be a Clydesdale or something. Walking along the trail and got a buddy up ahead of me there. I may have to let him go because they have been known to bite people and kick people and I don't have no beef with them. I think this is the last bridge heading north. So you can see the tides come in and the marshes are wet with water. Big water. Haven't seen a gator yet, but I'm looking. I'm looking. Pulled out my phone, found a cliff bar in there, so looks like I can eat a little breakfast as I walk north. I see some animals up ahead. I think they're wild boar. Yep. Dang, they're going into the woods. I'm about a hundred yards from them. I could tell because those little piglets, their little legs move. They're funny. This is kind of interesting. Some bones here <clears throat> on the side of the main road. I'm guessing a deer died here a while back. Some more bones behind the log. A little rainy today. Look at these bluffs. Hmm. I don't think many people come back here. There's a lot of birds. I'll check it out. Actually, there's quite a few cemetery plots back here, but this is interesting. This person obviously liked seashells. Look at this. Somebody named Candler. That's pretty cool. And oh, that looks like a there's some seashells here and this looks like a spear of some a fishing pole. Okay. William Chester Warren. They say, okay, so that's uh, 69, 79, 86. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good life. Uh, they say the, the hunting and fishing out here is outstanding, and that's what brought the Carnegies here. So, uh, aside from the nice weather in the wintertime. That in a minute. Oh, these are so old I can't read them. Uh, that one looks like 18, 18, 
something, 1850 something, 1862. Who knows? Nineteen seventeen. Eighteen thirty two to nineteen seventy seventeen. That's a Bunkley. There's a trail here named Bunkley. Born on Cumberland Island. Died in Abbeville, Georgia. Like I said, not many people get back here. I've never known anybody to come back here, but somebody I'm not gonna step on the grave, somebody planted. A nice orange tree and there's an orange I'm not gonna let it go to waste there's one that went to waste but this one looks really good came right off I'm gonna check it out for lunch I love taking these seldom traveled routes if you think about it not many people ever ever been back here and that's pretty cool today it's almost 11 o'clock I haven't seen a single person I'd heard there's another airstrip on the north side of the island, and this must be it here. Because we're on the north side of the island, and it looks like you could land a plane here. I don't know how far back it goes, but man, that's pretty long. Ooh, I see some animals out there, too. Probably geese or turkey. Hmm, I'll have to walk down there and check it out. This must be what they call the settlement up here. There's a few structures. I don't know if anybody lives here. We'll check it out. I think this is the church, but it might be. Oh, it is a church. It is. Not very big, but I think John F. Kennedy Jr. got married here and they spent their honeymoon on Cumberland Island at Dungeon at uh, Grayfield Inn. I'm gonna stop and get something to eat before it rains. Hopefully the rain will hold off long enough for my chili mac and beef and maybe a cup of coffee afterwards. This is kind of cool, right by the African Baptist Church. There's this house that used to, somebody used to live here, but you can use the restrooms and they have water in there. But I'll tell you what, I got some water. It smelled like rotten eggs. You can drink it, but I'm gonna wait till I get back to the well at the campsite. I, I still got a liter of water at least. And uh, I think I'm gonna pass on that rotten egg smelling stuff. Cool house though. Still waiting out the rain. But one thing hiking has taught me is be resourceful and you know how bad the water is here so that was empty and I'm collecting some rain water just in case. I've got another liter and I've only got about three or four miles to go but that was empty, so I figured I'll just go ahead and try to fill it up with some water that I wouldn't mind drinking if I had to drink it. It probably tastes pretty good, but I'm man, this sulfur water is not for me. Uh, I think in another hour or so, the rain should be letting up. The rain's still coming. It's coming good. This morning, I was thinking I might leave my tent at Brick Hill and just hike up here with my rain jacket and some water 
and do some sightseeing and then make my way back to Brick Hill. But, you know, when you're hiking, you need to have plan A, plan B, plan C. And I figured I might as well just pack everything up and have it with me because it gives me an extra layer of options that I can use. And here I am stuck up here on the north end of the island. And if it rained all night, at least I got my gear with me and I could stealth camp here. Uh, I have I have some options. I was running low on water, and there's some rainwater for the taking. I got about three quarters of a liter now, in addition to my other liter. So uh, you're always when you're hiking, you're always looking for options, and I'm charging up my my battery. Got my raincoat, and waiting for the rain to stop. And if it doesn't stop on to plan B or plan C, but uh, as long as I've got all my stuff with me, I've got options. Uh, the rain's let up a little bit, but it's showing it's supposed to rain some more. You can see I've almost got a full liter of water now, in addition to my other liter. And I just can't decide whether to stay here or make a run for it. And... I mean, the forecast is for heavy rain until about 7, and it gets dark about 6.30. Uh, I guess rain's not the worst thing in the world. It's just water. This is Bunkley Trail. Remember, I was going to try to stay on the main roads, but uh, I got two or three more hours of sunlight, and it's not raining, so I am trying to book it over to my campsite. This is a bit of a shortcut. So, this trail's not too bad. A little, a little wet. Well, fortunately I've hiked through Maine and Vermont, so I know what this is like, but I would have preferred not to be wading through this stuff. But when it rains, this is what happens. At uh, Bunkley Trail, Binkley Trail, whichever, was such a good shortcut that I overshot where I was supposed to take a right. So I, I'm actually south of, I have to go back north now. But that's okay. Uh, if it's raining, if it's rained a lot, I probably wouldn't take that shortcut. It's quite a bit of standing water. And at some places it's pretty narrow. So, you know, high, high likelihood, higher likelihood that you'll get ticks. But uh, if it's been raining and you don't want to get ticks, I'd just, I would just stay on the, uh, I'd stay on the main drag. But looks like I'm home. Here we go. Looks like I got the place to myself again. Only a fool would be out here camping when it's raining and thunderstorming and stuff like that. You gotta make reservations a good bit in advance. I made mine two or three weeks in advance. And at the time the weather looked like it was gonna be pretty good, but uh, it's gonna be, it was good my first two days and it'll be good the last day. I'm here. Look, somebody had an oyster party here, but I'm not going to camp over here. As you can see, it's wet, and there's just no reason to do that. That's a shame, too. Look at that river. Maybe over here. Ooh, this does look pretty good. Oh, well, I got to pick me out of sight and throw my tent down. When you're picking out a tent site, always look to see what's up above and think, worst case scenario, if that tree fell or that limb fell, where would I be in relation to the limb or tree that's going to fall? Because, uh, and look at the tree and see if it's healthy or not so healthy, because a lot of times these big branches can just fall, like that whole tree fell into the river. But if you get a branch fall on you, it could be pretty painful. So try to pick a good spot that in especially in, in rainy conditions windy conditions it's going to be safe and that's what I'm looking for now if I'm set up I'll probably put a few logs down to anchor my little tie downs here I've already had to do that over here tonight's a wet night and from personal experience the little anchors here will give way when it gets soggy and then the tent will fall in on you 
and then you get wet and then you have to get out and fix it. So I'm going to try to do it right the first time. And I already had my big meal of the day, so I'm just going to have a, a protein bar, put my food bag, up, food bag up in the tree, maybe that one right there, and hunker down for the night because it's supposed to rain all night. Bonnie Whaler said the story Bob sang it beautifully He gets all the glory But the one who made the difference Not one single word was lost Sing out loud, sing out strong Peter Tosh, Peter Tosh Yeah.